Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Margaret Spellings, president of the George W. Bush Presidential Center. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to the Bush Center. We're thrilled you're here. We're here this morning, of course, to examine the unique needs of our military service personnel and what we can do to more effectively help them during their transition from active duty. And thank you all for being here. But before I go any further, I'd like to ask everyone in the audience who's currently serving or has served in the military to please stand so that we can recognize and thank you. Thank you for volunteering to wear our country's uniform and to protect the freedoms that we cherish in America. Please stand. Wow. Thanks also to the family members. Some of you have played the role of caretaker when your loved one came home injured from battle. And we're grateful for your service and your sacrifice. So let's give the family members a round of applause as well. As we just saw in the opening video, the Bush Institute, through our military service initiative, President Bush supports all our nation's service members, especially those wounded in post-9-11 military service. It's a big year for our military service initiative. Under the President's leadership, we are asking how we can best serve our veterans. So thank you, President Bush, for your leadership. Looking around this room, it's clear that we have a high-powered who's who group assembled here today, and we're thrilled to have such participants on the panels. I know we're all going to learn a lot. General Pace, where are you? Thank you for uh, being here this morning and for your leadership of our advisory committee. Dr. Biden, thank you for making the trip to warm, sunny Texas. We look forward to hearing from you. And thank you, Colonel Miguel Howe, also seen in the video, for your leadership of this tremendous initiative. We are thrilled to have you continuing to serve us, Colonel. I also want to recognize the good work of each of you here, the corporate, nonprofit, and government partners that we have here today. You've stepped up to meet the needs of our service members and their families, and we and they are grateful. Thank you to the companies and citizens who fund these organizations. They couldn't do it without you. Our two organizing principles here at the Bush Center are leadership and freedom, because we're always in need of the first and at risk of losing the chance for the second. This audience certainly understands that better than anybody. You're here because you are leaders and because you have a deeply held commitment to freedom. At the Bush Center, each of our initiatives is designed to help identify and develop leaders in the United States and abroad as we work on many fronts. Our education initiative is providing innovative ways to train school principals to lead their campuses and is rethinking how best to educate students during the particularly challenging years of middle school. Our global health initiatives is helping save the lives of those in Africa by bringing vital health care to those most in need. Our human freedom work hosts dissident visitors, most recently a Chinese activist who's a blind advocate for farmers and the disabled and a North Korean political prison camp survivor. Our women's initiative, led by Mrs. Bush, helps cultivate female leaders through a fellowship program in Egypt and now Tunisia, the Afghan Women's Project, and a special partnership program with first ladies around the world to help advance education, health, and economic opportunity for women and children worldwide. And finally, of course, the reason we're here today, the goal of our military service initiative, is to honor post-9-11 veterans by empowering them to live productive, fulfilling lives when they leave military service. And now it's my honor to introduce a man who's doing just that, Justin Constantine. Lieutenant Colonel Justin Constantine joined the United States Marine Corps after completing his second year of law school. While on active duty, he served as a judge advocate specializing in criminal law. As a reservist in 2006, he was deployed to Iraq and was hit by a sniper. After recovering from his injuries in 2007, he worked with the U.S. Department of Justice, the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, and the FBI. Not long ago, he began his own business as an inspirational speaker. Justin participated in our Warrior Open golf tournament last December. That's how, September, that's how we got to know him, and you'll recognize him from the video. Justin, thank you for your service and for being such a powerful example. Thank you for your leadership and for being here today. 
Justin. Well, it's truly, honor to be, uh, truly an honor to be here on such, on such an important day. As a wounded warrior and a post-9-11 veteran who made the transition to the private sector during a tough economic time, I think I'm a good representative of today's newest, greatest generation. Today, we're going to hear from another, a number of experts and thought leaders on issues all related to veteran transition. At the end of the day, it truly does take a village. And I hope you realize how complicated a successful transition actually can be and what an important role each of you plays in it. After I was airlifted to the medical hospital in Lanschul, my wife, Dahlia, stayed at the Fisher House and was treated like royalty there. A couple weeks later at the ICU in Bethesda, Helen Tulin from the Semper Fi Fund came to visit me. A week after that, RJ Mead from the Wounded Warrior Project came to visit me. I was getting a surgery, but he left a t-shirt there for me on my bed, which reminded me that America cared about my recovery. As an outpatient, I learned to play golf with Jim Estes in the Salute to Military Golf Association, which is how I ended up here in September for the Warrior Open, which was a truly incredible experience for everyone who was involved. I developed the courage to open my own business after I talked to Mike Haney and attended the entrepreneurship boot camp for disabled veterans at Syracuse University. Now, as you heard, I'm an inspirational seeker and I've worked with a lot of corporations, including a handful of Blackstone companies, thanks to the likes of Steve Schwartzman, Sandy Ogg, and Mark Floyd. Now I continue to get my counseling for post-traumatic stress through Give an Hour, which provides free and much-needed health care, mental health care for the post-9-11 veterans and their families all across the country. I'm proud to be part of the uh, Chamber of Commerce's Hiring Our Heroes initiative, their campaign, which is devoting great resources to all of our transitioning service members. And through the VA's VOC Rehab Program, I'm now pursuing an advanced law degree. The list of people and programs that have helped me in my tra transition goes on and on, and every veteran in this room has their own list. I hope that by showing you my quick snapshot demonstrates that America has now truly stepped up to the challenges of supporting today's vets in an unprecedented manner. When you look at me, I hope you see the millions of other post-9-11 veterans and their families. Today's veterans don't need a handout, but a hand up. And all of your coordinated efforts are a critical part of our successful transition. Some of us are facing some very tough obstacles right now, but we all want to be productive members of society. We all want to take care of our families, just like each one of you. And often, when given the opportunity, we end up being leaders in our communities. The skills we bring to the workforce are unmatched especially considering they are forged in the toughest work environment imaginable. President Bush was obviously committed to the truth while he was in office, and that hasn't changed since he left. I've seen his personal impact on a number of individual veterans, and it's nothing short of inspiring. Today's issues need to be discussed because they're good for all of America. I'm incredibly proud to stand behind President Bush and what he's doing today, and now I'm equally proud to introduce you to the 43rd President of the United States, George W. Bush.